Good morning, and welcome to our morning musings. Today, we're going to look at the gospel lesson for this coming Sunday, uh, the parable of the sower in the gospel of St. Matthew. Let's begin with Luther's morning prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give you thanks, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me today from all sin and all evil so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. So, the parable of the sower in Matthew 13 goes like this. The same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But as the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell on thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And then later, Jesus uh, explains this uh, parable to his disciples. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, in the Gospel of Mark, the disciples never fully understand what Jesus is talking about. So down in verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky soil, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble and persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and yields nothing. But as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and it yields, in one case a hundredfold, in one case a sixty, in another thirty. So, in this parable, we know who the sower is. The sower is Jesus. And we know that when God gives his word of grace through Jesus to all the world, People respond to it differently. For some, their hearts are just hard. They're already locked into their value system. They're already locked into what they think and how they see the world. And the seed has no place. And suddenly it is snatched away. And there are those uh, who get excited about this grace God gives. But... Um, they spring up quickly and embrace it quickly, but before too long, things become difficult. It's hard sometimes to live as a child of God. It's hard sometimes to love some people the way Jesus loves us. And before long, it doesn't have roots. It's not been nurtured by the word, by worship, by prayer, by reading of scripture. They just get excited and, and, and don't nurture their faith. Faith is something that is alive, something is faith that, that grows. Um, and it grows by surrounding itself with word and sacrament. Um, and some, um, they, they like the word of God. Um, they're warm to it. But you know, they just can't let go of the stuff the world promises. Um, Jesus says, you know, the cares of the world things that cause us problems. But he also says the wealth of the world. Um, and we know that too, that uh, the world starts promising us all these good, good things. If we just quit wasting our time and our money and our energy on this Jesus thing, you know, we 
we can have all kinds of good things on that tithing thing that God talks about. We we we, we don't want to hear about that. We we you know more money for us is better. And before long, the wealth of the world uh, lures us away, or the cares of the world, uh, the things that the world tells us that are important. Uh, and before long, this word of God, this precious joy, is just choked out. But some falls on good soil. Some falls on soil and it takes root and it grows. Now, I've told you a few times, my grandfather, Overdeet, was a farmer. And um, he grew corn and he grew wheat and he grew alfalfa. Um, and I will tell you, when it came to planting, um, we worked hard. I mean, uh, tilling the fields for the wheat and uh, planting the seed in its or the corn seed in its rows and scattering the, the alfalfa. Uh, we worked hard on those days uh, to grow those plants. But my grandfather would also be the first to point out that when he did all that, um, there wasn't a whole lot else to do. Um, there may be some tilling of the soil to get rid of some of the weeds and stuff, but the truth of the matter is it was the rain, it was the sunshine, it was a good God that grew the seed. And Jesus, in his day, probably would have said the same thing. Yeah, the seed falls on good soil, soil that has been prepared by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that was given to us in the waters of our baptism so that we have our hearts ready to hear and receive this grace, this love of God. Um, it's prepared by the Holy Spirit. And then this seed comes and it grows. And it grows by the promise of God. God promises that his word will grow in us and it will produce. It will produce abundantly. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Any farmer I know would be glad with that kind of result from their planting. You know, I grow a little garden myself. Um, I don't get back a 100 fold from the tomato seeds I planted the pepper seeds I planted. That is an abundant harvest. But I also want you to note that if the seed falls on good soil, soil that has been nurtured and prepared by the Holy Spirit, soil that has continued to be cared for by the Holy Spirit through the growth process, it yields. It, it grows in our life. Now, not the same. Not the same. Please understand that. Um, when God's Love grows in each of us. It grows according to God's will and God's promise. You know, maybe I'm only 30-fold. You know, that's still an abundant harvest. And sometimes we look and say, yeah, but I, I should be better. I should be producing 100-fold. I, I should be better. Well, you will be what God wants you to be. And you will produce what God wants you to produce. You will continue to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You will continue to hear the word, to celebrate the sacraments. You'll continue to pray. You'll continue to worship. But what's produced out of our lives, that's in God's hands. God is the one who takes whatever we offer, our time, our talent, takes whatever we bring in response to God's grace with gratitude and it will produce whatever God chooses. So rather than being down on ourselves because we're not a better Christian, recognize that we are a Christian, that God's love dwells in us, that God's love has come to us, that God's Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus Christ is and this glorious gift that Jesus gives us in his grace, in his mercy. And then out of that joyful recognition, let's let God use us in however God needs us to be used in the kingdom of God. All right, in our prayers for this morning, we're praying for some folks. Uh, that we have been praying for and continue to pray for, uh, for Larry Johnson and Chris Hill, Pat Martin, uh, in 
their uh, health uh, issues. Uh, we pray for Elaine Kaufman and her um, rehabilitation. Um, we pray for daily strength for Donald Velleride Sr. Uh, recovering from a surgery. Um, we pray for all of our seniors, uh, all of our seniors who are uh, facing challenges, particularly in this COVID, but just normal health issues as well. Especially, we've been asked to pray for Randy and Liz Pauk's uh, parents. They're both in their 80s and have some health issues. Um, Randy and Liz also asked us to pray for Katie, um, who has some health concerns and is uh, seeking out a doctor to help her with those issues. And may God surround her with all the care that she needs. And we commend into God's good care, Jesse Green, uh, Stacy Cooney's mother. Would you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit this amazing Holy Spirit that has come into our lives in the waters of our baptism, this Holy Spirit who has prepared us, our mind, our heart, our lives, to receive and understand and see the gift we have in Jesus Christ. If we were left to our own, O oh Lord, we would be distracted by the world. We would just be set in our ways. But because the Holy Spirit is with us, we are open to the word of God. We are eager to receive what you have to give us. And we are eager to use what you have given us in a blessing to others. And so today we offer prayers of praise and prayer and thanksgiving uh, at what you have given and ask that you now use our lives according to your holy will. Send your Holy Spirit to show us today where we can share God's love and how we can do that. Um, and then, Heavenly Father, it will produce whatever you want it to produce. We are simply instruments in your hands. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the new lives that bear fruit. And thank you for your abiding love in our lives in the Holy Spirit. Today, Heavenly Father, we ask you to wrap, wrap your arms in love, especially around Larry and Chris, and Pat, Elaine, Donald Sr., uh, our seniors, uh, Katie, Provide doctors, nurses, technicians, therapists, all the amazing people, and let their hands be your hands, bringing healing and hope. We hope in a certain hope, Heavenly Father. We hope in the sure promise of the cross that death leads to eternal life. And so we commend into your care, Jesse, and we know that she now celebrates with you life and life everlasting. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love, but now we give her to you your holy child, and we will be together again on the last day. We pray all this, Heavenly Father, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.